Well, I started out as a playwright, well, and I still am a playwright, although mostly I write novels now. But uh, uh, when, I was, uh, when I was at the Yale Drama School uh, with my fellowships, uh, I met Ron Sprout. And Ron was, uh, was writing Dark Shadows, and it was a pretty heavy schedule. And so he asked me if I would write some of his scripts for him. And so I did, and they were, they were done, but they were done with his name. Uh, and they seemed to like them. So that when, at one time, uh, Dan asked me if I would just come and sit in on a, a story session uh, when they were doing that, when they were talking about where they were going to go and what they were going to do. And at the time, the show was uh, The Phoenix, when Laura was going to go up in flames when her hundred years was up and she would uh, rise again. And uh, that was when I began, I began writing, I began writing the script. And then that, and then I went on as my own, my own name. And uh, I, I, I stayed on. You know, it was a kind of a far out show, especially for the time in which it was done. I mean, we had, we had a phoenix, we had a vampire, we had a, you know, everything going on. But at its best, it always had something going on underneath it that people could identify with, whether they could identify it articulately or know that they were identifying it. And the primary, the primary example, of course, is Barnabas. Because when uh, I remember the, uh, we were in the, one of the meetings, and Dan said, I want a vampire for the kids for the summer. And we, and we thought, oh, God, now he wants a vampire, you know, one of those days. And we thought, well, you know, what are we going to do? I mean, he's going to bite somebody, and there'll be gore and everything like that. And, uh, uh, and that's one of the attractions for, for Dan was the things of that, of that nature. But uh, what, we, what Ron and, and I did, I think before we got down the elevator from Dan's office that day, we decided that we would make him a reluctant vampire that he didn't approve of himself doing these things that he had to do. I mean, it was his nature to do it. And, uh, and that he was somebody who was yearning for love, but he had this compulsion. So that, what, that whole series, what that was, and that was when the show took off. And the reason that it took off is that what it was really all about was that it was about compulsive sex. And these kids and older people like that, they may not have identified it as such, but it was there, and it was a reality, and it gave those shows a reality. And that's what made it the great success that it was. It was always at its best when it had an underlying human uh, identification. I think Dan is a genius. I, I think that he, uh, that he, first of all, that he conceived of this show, and that he was so willing and able to take it in directions that for which he had he had no uh, nothing to refer to, it was it was all Dan Curtis, and uh, and his absolute professionalism, and I would say artistry too. I mean that he always would say you know make it more interesting, make it better. What can we do to make it better? What can we do to let's do this? And he would come up with ideas so that those long sessions that we would have in his office with. Uh, Dan putting golf balls on the green carpet uh, and we're coming up with things or struggling to come up with things like that. But there were always, there were always sessions about how can we improve it? How can we make it more interesting? How can we make it more exciting? You know, how can we make it more suspenseful? And, uh, and, and with, with him there, it, was, uh, it made a big difference because it was, it was Dan driven all the, all the way down the line. I mean, Ron and I might come up with an idea to make him a reluctant vampire, but um, uh, we would never have had that idea if, if Dan hadn't said, okay, we're going to give the kids a vampire for the summer. Well, of course, the show took off, and uh, we weren't going to, because uh, they weren't going to kill off the, you know, the, the main character, the person who had become you know, the, the, the center, the center of, of, the, uh, of the show. And, uh, and that led them to try other things. And when David Selby came on, and uh, Laura Parker, all those, uh, Angelique, all those other people came on. And later on, you know, I, was, I did the show up 
through the Barnabas period, the, the main Barnabas period, and then I left to do a documentary for NBC, and then I came back later when the show had uh, was doing. They were doing parallel time when I, when I came back, and I thought that at that time, see, Dan was working on House of Dark Shadows at that time, so he wasn't there when we did our plotting and our blocking. That was when I was working with Gordon and with uh, Gordon Russell and Sam Hall, and. Uh, and I thought we, we lost something with, without Dan, that we didn't have Dan there to, to really work with us. And I think uh, my feeling, and this may not be applicable because uh, it was a while back, but I think that we, we would lose what I was talking about before, that human element that people could identify with. And I think we, we, we chewed up plot too fast and uh, that we didn't really go deeper into the, into the, into the characters, that we relied too much on uh, effects. Uh, now this may be contradicted by the shows themselves, but that's my memory of it, was that I just wish that we had been able or forced ourselves to rely less on the effects and more on the humanity of the characters. Because I think that's what, you know, that was, uh, what made the show a success? I mean, it's true that it was cast in this, you know, in, the, in this gothic sense, uh, and this gothic surround, and this gothic imperative. Uh, but the thing that sustained it was the humanity of the people that they were suffering. You know, they were going through difficult, difficult times and responding in a, in a certain way that people who watch it could identify with. And that if you lose that, if there's nothing for them to really Catch on and say yes. I can. I feel for that person. I really. I can. I can. I know what. I know what it's like to feel that way, and I know what it's like to have to act that way or to whatever it is. And I. I. I wonder, more than no. I can't say I know, but I wonder whether or not something was lost toward the end, uh, toward the last year or so of the show that uh, that was fatal. I thought the concept was was uh, was fascinating. It was very interesting because who who got trapped? I, I can't remember who got trapped in parallel time, and uh, nobody uh, and nobody knew him. Uh, and we played played off that that he was there and he was discovering a plot. I think it was Barnabas, and uh, and he was discovering something terrible that was going to happen, and he had to get out before it happened if i remember if i remember correctly and it was it was it was fascinating to uh, to work on because you know there you had you had a, a what by then was a sympathetic character barnabas and you put him in in jeopardy you put him in jeopardy of some kind where he's going to be destroyed and uh it would be uh it would be it was it was it was fascinating because it was something to hold on to to get him out in time and i think and we did you know before the calamity before the calamity took place one of the one of the difficulties was uh, not making him the center of the action at times and having him play, uh, you know, a second a secondary role, which is not uh, what the show was. Uh, and it, I think that what we I I'm not all this clear on everything, but I wonder if we used the fact that he was a vampire as a way. And this sounds kind of crazy, but as a way that that would allow him to help other people, do you know what I mean? And I, but that, to find out some way there uh, uh, that would involve him as vampire, and that it would turn him good because he did have sort of psychic powers, and uh, I, I don't know if we utilize that to the degree that we might have to keep him actively who he was. Uh, even when he was not the center of the action, whether it, but it became some somebody else. Maybe it was a missed opportunity. It didn't occur to us at the time, and uh, too late now. All these good ideas come too late. There we are. It happens.